Welcome back. In section 1.1.4, we'll talk about vector spaces of functions. In the three examples that we had at the start of this section, we talked about um, uh, combinations of vectors, linear combinations of functions, and linear combinations of matrices. So far, we've already handled a vector space of vectors and a vector space of matrices. And now in this section, and this subsection, we'll be talking about uh, vector spaces of functions. So for any set A, I'm going to take the f of A to mean the set of all real value functions with domain A, and I'm going to prove in this section that it is a vector space with the standard operations on functions, which I'll make specific as well. All right, so let's first define a function, make sure everybody's uh, with us on this. I'm going to take A and B to be any two sets. We say that f is a function with domain A whose values are in B. So for this, let me write it down here, B is called the codomain. So domain A, codomain B, if for every element A in A, f gives you an element f of A which is in B. We then write f, two points, this is the domain A, codomain B. Notice that I use codomain and not range because range are the set of values that you actually hit. Codomains are the set of values that you're allowed to hit, but we don't have a restriction that everything in B must be the value of the function for a certain A. All right, two functions, f1 and f2, with the same domain and codomain are equal if for all A, f1, and f2 are actually the same elements. So if two functions take the same values for every a, then they are equal functions. So if you want to prove that two functions are not equal, so functions f1 and 2 are different, you only need to find one element, a in a, so that f1 and f2 do not agree on that value. So it takes a single single value. All right, so for a specific set A, we'll denote f of A the set of all real value functions with domain A. That means our B or codomain is always going to be R here. So if I write it using the notation we just saw, I'm going to talk about functions f from A to R, and I'll just say f is a function. So all functions with domain A taking values in R. That's going to be f of A. Here's a theorem that's going to tell us that this can form a vector space. For any set A, f of A is a vector space under the following operations. The addition is going to be the usual addition of functions. So for any two functions, f and g, in my set, so from A to R, the sum will be defined. Well, to define a function, I only need to tell you how to find um, the value of that function. So here's my function, the value at a specific point A. Well, that's going to be given by f of A plus g of A. All right, scalar multiplication. For any function f and any real value k, kf is going to be a new function. That's going to take a to take k times f of a. All right, so very standard operations. And now we're going to prove this theorem. We're going to prove that with these operations, we get a vector space. So we need to look at all 10 axioms. I'm going to do some of them. You'll do the other ones. Axiom 1, I'm going to take f and g in f of a. I need to prove that f plus g is in f of a as well. Sorry, this is the wrong f. So really, I'm using a curly f. I'm not going to be picky on your calligraphy. So whatever you write is fine, but I'll try to keep it consistent with this curly f. All right, so I need to prove that f plus g is a function in R. So f, now let me take a in a, f plus g of a is f of a plus g of a, we already know that f and g are in f of a. So this is a real number. This is a real number. So f a plus g of a is also in an R. And so f plus g 
is in f of a. Oh, sorry about that. Apparently my curly f is a bit too much for them to handle. All right, there you go, f plus g is in f of a. All right, now we want to show that f plus g and g plus f are the same function. So again, to prove that two functions are the same, we just need to show that they agree on all elements. So let me take a and a. I need to show that f plus g on a and g plus f on a are the same. Well, that's f of a plus g of a. This is g of a plus f of a. Remember, these are real numbers, and so these are equal by property of real numbers. We've done this before. And so since f plus g and g plus f agrees for all a, they're the same function. All right, axiom three we'll do in a worksheet or an assignment. Um, let's move on to axiom four. For axiom four, I need to figure out what my special zero element is. Uh, in this case, we're going to take the zero function. Then I need to check that this function, f plus the zero function, is the same as this function, which is just f. Again, to prove that two functions are the same, you need to prove that they agree on any element of the domain. So I'm going to take an element of the domain. And I'm going to apply both functions to it. So f plus 0 of a, that's f of a plus 0 of a. 0 is the 0 function, so that's f of a plus 0. It gives 0 for any a, and so I get f of a. So f plus 0 is the same function as f since it agrees on every element of a. All right, axiom 5. I'm going to take a function f in f of a. I'm going to have to define it's in it's it's an additive inverse, so minus f of a is minus f of a. So what I need to prove here is I need to prove that if I add this function with my other one, I get the zero function. Again, I want to prove that two functions are the same, so I'm going to take a random element in its domain, and I need to prove that the two functions agree on that element. So minus f plus f of a, that means minus f of a plus f of a. This function is just minus f of a plus f of a. And now these are real numbers. A number minus, uh, that's going to give you 0. And of course, the 0 function on a gives you 0. And since these are equal and a was an arbitrary element, I get that the two functions are the same. All right, so that's axiom five. Um, I'm going to leave you to prove six and seven and nine and 10. So the only one I will prove now is axiom eight. I'm going to prove that if I take two real numbers, k and m and r, and any function with domain a and codomain r, if I multiply f by k plus m, it's the same as multiplying f by k and by m, and then adding the two new functions. This is going to sound repetitive, but it's super important. If I want to prove the two functions are equal, I just need to show that they agree on every element. So let's take um, a and a. a. Then I need to compare what happens here. Oh, sorry. That's not. So this is my function, and I want to apply it to a. All right, so we're told that if we multiply a function by k plus m, then that's the same thing as taking its value and multiplying by k plus m. And now these are real numbers, so I can distribute. I get k f of a plus m f of a. Now 
Now, if I take the other one, then I'm going to have K F applied to A and then M F applied to A. And that's going to give me K F of A plus M F of A. All right, so when I spell both sides out, I get the same thing. And I haven't picked any A, it's just a random any element you want. And so that means that the original functions are equal, which is what I wanted to prove. All right, so this means that whatever set A you have, the functions from A to R form a vector space in a very natural way. And that's part of the reason in some problems, like in a differential equation problem we had um, in the introduction, we end up with linear combinations. All right, so we will using we'll be using um, the following special cases um, for a equals r. So these are functions from r to r. So these are the function that you studied a lot in um, Cal. Here you could have f of x is sine of x. That would be one example of a function that takes um, that has a domain r and codomain or target r. Uh, you could also restrict it to a certain interval. So f of a b, I will remove one of the parentheses just because it gets a bit cumbersome. Uh, that's the functions from the interval a b to r. And so something like tan of x, you could see it as a function from minus pi on 2 to pi on 2 to r. And so that would be part of this one. And then you could do the same thing with a close interval. So this would be a function from the close interval a, b to r. All right, so these three examples we'll use often.